Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it feels incredible to be back, for one, but, you know, that, that first fight was very much by design the way it was. Hometown, those hometown pressures, those, those intangibles that fighter, people who aren't fighters don't understand. You know, not being in the ring, not competing for two and a half years, there are certain parts of a fight that the outsiders never see. You know, there's the, the warm-up in the back. There's the, you know, eat, and my new team, getting, getting our kind of interaction going. Um, what it's going to be like on fight time. Getting your name called. Walking through that tunnel. Seeing the crowd. Seeing the ring. Being in the corner. Staring across the ring at your opponent. A guy you're about to fight. Um, being away from that for two and a half years, which is the longest of my professional career. And I've been fighting since I was 19 years old as a pro. So for me to kind of go through those steps was very important. And um, the reason I wanted it to be in my hometown at the Paramount in Huntington, I feel like there's more pressure there. I have a lot of internal pressures that I have to deal with going into fight week um, there. And I've dealt with that over and over again. You know, it was my ninth fight there. But I felt like it was only right for me to come back that way. And now for me to be right back to work less than two months later, and to be going at MSG, the mecca of boxing, is huge. You know, and, and I think it's a testament to all of the good work I did before that two and a half year layoff. Um, you know, so to be able to go right back into the main stage like this, uh, it, it, it feels awesome, and I'm, I'm excited. So in terms of me, like the, the why of why I stepped away, I was out of the ring, it really wasn't by choice. Um, I had a lot of, a lot of, it was a lot of factors. A lot of things were affecting uh, my return to the ring. You know, my last fight was the Errol Spence fight. Obviously, that didn't go the, the way that our team had planned. Um, I had a knee injury leading up to that fight. Um, didn't think it was going to be a big deal on fight night, but it is what it is. Um, I had surgery three days after that fight. I was under the knife, like, immediately. So that was part of it. You know, so there's the physical, physical aspect of, of me having knee surgery and kind of recovering from that. Um, not only as a fighter, but as an athlete, just getting, making sure that, that this knee, which I'm going to have for the rest of my career and the rest of my life is, is in working order. So that was part of it. Um, also I was having a lot of out of the ring issues and, and con contractual problems with my current promotion and management at that time. So there was, there was that, which actually is the main reason I stayed out as long as I did. Um, you know, that, that was a long drawn out process, which a lot of times legal disputes end up being, um, they're also very expensive. So, uh, it really just came to the point where I had been out of the ring too long. I had been around the sport so much, still had my drive, still had my desire, still wanted to be back in there. Uh, never didn't want to be. And, uh, we just had to, we just had to make it happen. You know, the window was getting smaller and, and, you know, I'm an athlete. There's only there's a finite amount of time for me to do what I can I can do, um, so now we're back and honestly the the landscape of the business right now of the boxing business is is phenomenal. You know it's a great time to be in the sport whether you're a fighter or a manager or a promoter. Um, there's a lot of great opportunities, so the time is perfect. Now as opposed to how I felt a few years ago or when I was in my career, one I feel a lot fresher. <laughs> honestly, I mean I may be older, but I've stayed in shape the entire time. Um, my, I feel honestly and physically, my fitness is, is probably better than ever. Um, you know, and I'm just smarter now. I just, I've now, not only just for having more years as a fighter, but also now being on the other side of the ropes and being a coach and being from the outside looking in, you know, working with, uh, with Daniel Jacobs and his camp, you know, I did four camps with him, been in the corner with him four times, two of which were world title fights. Um, you know, you, you, you got a different eye, you look for different things. Um, you learn different things in those camps. You see how guys do, how they do it for themselves, how, what works for them, what doesn't. Um, and I've been able to kind of pick and choose from that and really fine tune my focus for, for who I am as a fighter and how I prepare. What keeps you motivated? My motivation? I'm just a competitor. I like to win. I've, and I've always been that way. I think I, you could ask me that question when I first started my career. Um, you know, I was training at Robert Garcia's camp in Oxnard, California back in 2011, 2000, 2011, 2012. And uh, he found out I had a master's degree. He was like, what the fuck are you doing boxing? <laughs> Just like that. He goes, man, he's like, Chris Sudger, he must love the sport. 
And, you know, he's right. He's right. I didn't need to. I never needed to. Um, but I, just, I love the sport. I love I love everything about it. I grew up watching it. Um, you know, I'm, I get to live my dream. I'm going out there and, and fighting the best in the world. I've been a world champion. You know, I want to do it again. Um, but, yeah, no, I, 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 if I wake up with that competitive desire to, to go out and be the best guy in the gym, to to show out and be the man like that's 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 just who I am until that goes away I'm, I'm gonna keep fighting you know the the competition and I think I'm realizing this more and more as I become more mature as a human not even just as a, as, a, as an athlete or a fighter is the competition's always up here when you're young and dumb you don't have negative self-talk you're the man you're always the man you live it you breathe it. You wake up. God, I'm the fucking man. I'm going to go out there and do what I do. Um, as you get older and as you see what else is out there, um, you know, when you, when you go to the big pond and you experience what's really out there, that's when you, you get checked and you have to be like, man, maybe I got to do things a little differently. I can't just right through the front door kind of thing. So I think a big part of that, and I think, I think the athletes that, have the longest careers and are successful for the longest amount of time are the guys that are able to control and limit the negative self-talk. They're in their heads. They're able to keep their psychology where it needs to be, um, no matter what kind of outside pressures there are. And we've heard that a million times, like, oh, you gotta, you know, stay focused on the game and whatever. But what happens internally here, everyone has it. You, you can't do it. I don't know about this. That that you know. That, 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 that's there. And guys don't want to admit that, but that's, that's a very real thing. Being able to control that um, is, I think, the key to having a, a, a long and prosperous career. It's, it's my mindset. It's my head. It's my mind. Um, you know, it's, I'm, not just an, I'm not just an intelligent guy. I'm an intelligent fighter. Um, I had some people who had never seen me fight live before and they came to my last fight. And the Paramount's a very intimate venue, so you can really see what's going on. And I had a friend of mine who had been to a couple fights, but she wasn't a fight fan per se. Um, and she was like, you just look like you were thinking the whole time. And it's true. I am. I'm thinking constantly. There's nothing I'm doing in a ring that isn't thought out and isn't for a reason. Um, Every little foot work, every little feint, every little shoulder roll, every every head movement, everything that's going on, hand position. You know, boxing is incredibly, incredibly complicated, and a lot of people don't see the finer things that are going on in there. So for me, I think that that kind of separates me and makes me kind of like an old school guy because that's that's what boxing was. Um, you know, it's 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 the sweet science. You know, you, these guys are out there, and when it's done right, boxing is the most beautiful thing in the world. It's, it's fast paced chess, it's ballet, it's, it, and it's war all together. Um, so for me, it's, I'm, I'm out there and, and, and I'm calculated. That's, that's what separates me from these top guys. And being able to do that on the biggest stages in the heat of the moment is what separates champions from the rest. Madison Square Garden, there, there's, there's no place else in the world to a fighter. It's older than, it's, it's older than old, it's, it's iconic, um, you know, I'm, I can't not think about Muhammad Ali at this point. And like, as cliche as that is, like everyone knows Muhammad Ali, but like, it's the Felt Forum, it's Madison Square Garden, it's, you know, it's, it's the Mecca. It's got that name for a reason. Every, every boxer, every fighter, I've spoken to MMA guys who are like, man, the Garden. That, that's, that, it, it transcends even boxing. It's, it's fighters. So for me to go back there um, and fight, it doesn't matter that I've been there before, it doesn't matter that I've got to win there. Um, you know, it's, I could fight there a hundred times. It's gonna be special every single time. I'm gonna get goosebumps thinking about walking into that arena, you know, and, and, and being from Long Island and, and taking the LIRR and coming up those steps and there it is, Madame Demeca. I've never not, I've never come out of Long Island Railroad and not looked at the garden and been like, man, that's the Mecca right there. And I know quite a bit about Gonzalez. You know, we've, we've, uh, we've trained together, uh, strength conditioning wise, we sparred together over the years. Um, you know, we've, we've been at each other's gyms, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's a tough, hungry kid. You know, this, this is his opportunity. This is his Rocky moment. He's coming. He's going to be the best version of himself. Um, this is an opportunity for him. You know, um, he gets to fight a, a former world champion on a great stage. You know, this is, this is, this is his everything. This is his world title fight. 
So, um, you know, we just got to be prepared for that and understand that there's levels to this and I'm just on a different level. I'm going to go out there and, and assert that and, and show him and the world why I'm back. He's going to bring it. I know he's going to bring it. Um, you know, he, he can box a little bit. He can bang a little bit. Um, I, I know that he's going to fight hard. He's probably going to do whatever he can to try and try and make it work. Um, my job is, is to just shut it all down, control them, uh, use, use my experience, use the fact that I'm better in every way and assert that and show that. Um, it's not, it's not enough just to have it. You've got to be able to do it. So for me, I got to go out there and I just got, I got to do it. I got to be myself. One thing you can always expect from me is consistency. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to, I'm going to do what I do. Um, I'm going to be in your face all night long. I'm not going to get tired. I'm going to throw a lot of punches. You're not going to hit me. I don't watch a lot of tape. Tape doesn't show rhythm. I got to go in there and I got to feel your rhythm in the first round. And once I find it, it's a wrap. January 18th, the fans should absolutely suspect action, speed, precision, technique. That's why I walk out to Don't Sweat the Technique because I'm going out there and I'm showing all my skills.